get crazy with the old guy. The whole world is crazy, man. Man, women today, women today are crazy, man. My wife, y'all don't know my wife, but my wife is crazy, man. You ever eat cheese doodles? Cheese doodles are crazy. Hey, what's good, YouTube? Happy Saturday! Happy Groundhog Day! This is Talking Crazy 88 back again with another episode for you. Um, as I mentioned before, today is Groundhog Day. And um, apparently the rat from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania... Um, seems to think that we're going to have a short winter. We'll see. <laughs> it's 19 fucking degrees out today in New York City. I ain't, I'm not going anywhere. Fuck it. So that's why I'm going to spend the day just relaxing, cleaning up, cooking. Well, I'm not going to cook today, but I might order a pizza and watch some basketball. But anyway... As I promised, as I promised to you guys, I was going to read, do a reading today on, the, on a wonderful, wonderful um, book that was written by Miss Shaharazad Ali. Now, every black man should have this Bible, should, should have this book and treat it like it's a Bible. Um, looking back at some of the clips of the Phil Donahue show and the Geraldo show, it's kind of disturbing to see these black women fighting with another black woman who is addressing the problems within black women. It's crazy. Now, the issue has gone wor gotten worse because th we have no pride. We have no dignity. See, when you have websites like World Star Hip Hop, or as I affectionately call it, World Star Nigger Network, it just seems that we have lost our, our pride. We lost direction. We are a lost, lost community of people, individuals, who would go on YouTube, or go on AC, or ABC Nightly uh, Night Special, or whatever, or CNN, do, uh, C or CNN when you have a half-breed um, female anchor who's married to a white man doing black in America. It's kind of crazy to me. But it's gotten worse because we, we're up here talking about our social ills instead of working on how to be progressive. We're fighting with one another about who's democratic if you're, you're not down with the cause if you're not with the Democratic Party or if you're a Republican if you're a black Republican um, you gotta be a sellout Uncle Tom nigga house nigga and I don't see it that way I see and this is why black folks are Way, way, way behind the curve. We're gonna be, we're our sitting ducks, waiting to be exterminated when when it re when things really go down. But let me just read you the first three chapters of her book. Um, chapter one, her childhood. From the very first mo moment she's born, she becomes attached to her first teacher, her mother. Her eyes study her mother constantly during the initial bonding process. She learns to smile and form other mutual communications techniques. She, as with any other cub, is taught survival skills. How to eat, how dress, bathe, use the toilet, general manners, and obedience. Most implied by a look or spoken in a certain tone of voice. She is able to understand the language long before she can speak it. She never stops studying her mother, and she never stops learning from her. 
She is raised by two parents. She studies them both. Since she is with the mother or other females, she learns to tune in to them emotionally. She learns to observe the other adults in the same way. She can, she can detect when they are happy, at peace, or sadly restrained or mad. She also pays attention to how her mother treats her father. She, learn, she learns glances, body language, and moods. The spoken and unspoken message that her mother displays as, excuse me, at her mother displays as the cub, she mimics and, ex and includes these practices, right or wrong, as part of her survival skills from the very start. She overhears conversations that her mother has with her friends or relatives pertaining to the father. If all the if all of, excuse me, if all of the mother's comments are supportive and positive, good. But, the, but since the habit of gaming on the black man is a 400-year-old tradition here, the inflections are for the most part negative. She listens and she records. The first mental tapes translates into pictures and forms and they cannot be erased, at least not for many years. What she overhears as a small child may go something like this. Quote, I don't care what your father said, I said, end quote. I've got to cook and clean up this house before your father gets home because I don't want to hear his mouth. Your father don't run this house, I do. He don't know what he's talking about. He don't know that I know. He don't know what he's doing. John makes me sick. I get tired of picking up behind him. If the father requests something, she may hear the mother say, get it yourself. Or, you don't tell me what to do. I do what I want to do. Every mother is guilty of using, using these or similar terminology about her husband when she is tired, exasperated, or angry during the girl child's upbringing. The training message from the mother, the teacher, is, number one, the black man don't know. Number two, certain references to the black man are only are made only behind his back. Three, a woman has the option to choose what she wants to obey. Four, a man is a bother. After hearing various negative inferences behind the father's back, then the girl child observes how the mother may front off when the father is pres present, pretending that she is obedient and everything is fine. The girl child, while too young to actually distinguish between tr truth and falsehood, watches how trusting and unaware the father is. Soon as she concludes that the mother is right, he don't know, which must mean he is dumb. And if he is dumb and the girl doesn't know what's going on behind his back, it makes the girl child insecure. He is physically strong, but we live two lives. One in front of daddy and one behind his back. Since the mother is her mentor and they are alike, she agrees. You can't trust him. He is different from us. And the cycle starts. On the other hand, if there is no biological father or stepfather on the present premises whom the girl child can relate to and observe daily, the scenario may go something like this, Quote, parentheses, especially if the, if the single mother is periodically changing men or dating around, close parentheses. She may hear, number one, I'm going to get that nigga tonight. 
Number two, I keep calling him every night, but he ain't home. Number three, girl, don't believe nothing he says. He just lies all the time. Number four, I can't believe nothing he says. Number five, I'm going to make him spend some money on me. Number six, I got to find me a man. Number seven, I want to see what he can do. Number eight, you can't let a man know all your businesses. The training message from the mother in this instance is, number one, the black man is a liar. Number two, don't believe, him, don't believe in him. He'll disappoint you. Number three, the black man will desert you. No security. Number four, withholding information is a necessary practice when dealing with a black man. Number five, and if you're going to deal with a black man, you have to have a plan. While the aforementioned statement examples may seem trite or unimportant, remember that they are, the, they are of great significance since they are a part of the first introductory impressions on the girl child about the black man who is usually not present to defend himself or prove that he, the charges are not true. To the girl child, these impressions re represent the pure truth from the person who takes care of her, her mother. In the two-parent home, the girl child has an easier time learning how to charm the father and get him to cooperate with her and grant her wishes. She adopts these skills to manipulate a person whom she already believes is too swift mentally, according to mom. She also sees that the father will give the mother a verbal order and later, later she sees the mother do something else different or in direct opposition. She also learns the politics of a, excuse me. She also learns the politics of female survival regarding the chast chastisement. If the father tells her to do something or reprimands her, she finds that she can go to the mother and get the ruling changed or omit it completely. Above all, she can usually get sympathy from the mother in words or even more powerful from her mother's eyes, which say, do it, you know how he is, or I'll make it up to you later, or I agree with you, he's wrong, but do it anyway. In either case, the father's word is deemed questionable and should be examined and verified to determine if it's wrong. Also, that his word can be opposed or reject, rejected successful, success, excuse me, successfully. If the father becomes vocally angry with the mother, she may know her protect, protectiveness by sending the girl child from the room or outside to play. If the father is rightfully angry, unbeknownst to the child, the mother may be extra nice to defer his attention from the issue to get his mind off of it. The father may be right, but the teaching message is, number one, he's dangerous and wants, wants to argue, but I'll protect you from him. Two, this is something I have to endure, but you don't. Three, he can be swayed with a little kindness, kindness and charm. Number four, he's our boss, but we don't like it because he's unfair. The girl child watches her mother simulate several emotions, pleasure, admiration, enthusiasm, interest, and cooperation. But the cutting side of the issue is that the mother obvious, obviously is protect, projecting fake agreement, and it seems to work. In addition to these negative impressions about the capabilities and inconsistencies of the black man who's gone all the, all the time anyway, 
the girl child is introduced to fairy tales as bedtime story, as bedtime and story time reading. Some of the stories are fantasies, are fantasy about the wonderful life white men and white women lead. They tell you about how gal gallant the white man is and how he always saves the day for the white woman. Sometimes the stories about black people are about black people. Most of the children's books are written by black female who present the black men in superficial roles. Or they are shown as black men protecting white, a, wife life, a white lifestyle. The descriptions are usually vague, since the black woman does not know or admit the good values in all in the black man, excuse me, the values in the black man. One can only describe with words what one knows or discovers, and the black man, woman is, is hard-pressed to dig up good renditions about the black man and put it into words. Since she doesn't live since she doesn't live it, she can report about it. If the books are about Africa, the girl child still cannot really identify or mesh the African king idea with her daddy down in the living room, sprawled in his favorite chair while she watches her mother work in the kitchen. Her small, mouth, her small mind cannot assimilate well enough to discuss Distinguish a routine setting from the artificial pictures shown in storybooks. The black mother thinks that fairy tales are harmless entertainment for her daughter and son and have no other intrinsic value to the development of the child. A new brain has not yet equipped the psychological tools to filter or disseminate information, accepts any and all information it is programmed with the truth, as, as, with as the truth. Fairy tale characters, cartoons, and talking animals re represent the truth to them, and judging the outcome are very detrimental to the child's development in reality recognition. Consequently, when the girl child arrives, arrives at school, she has already been programmed with a bushel of false ideas about what is real and what and unreal and what is foreplay and what actually exists between seeing and touching real flesh and blood people and being introduced to Mickey Mouse a talking rat Cinderella Snow White Superman Cookie Monster, Big Bird, Donald Duck, Casper, Bugs Bunny, and the Smurf, the Muppets, and Garfield, and a whole and a host of other cartoons. She is quite confused. She carries these fantasies into the future, and they govern many of her emotions and ideas. They become deeply rooted in her psyche. And, and will override true information from other sources. She is not just looking at the cartoons. She is also li listening to their dialogues and copies their responses. She is taught to love these artificial personalities. During this time, she is also introduced to Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, Cupid, and the fairy in the tooth fairy all of these toy animals and people are present to her presented to her as good and none of these first heroes which she is taught to love and admire are black other than possibly her girl baby dolls she is not introduced to her own culture but be aware that all of the misinformation imparted in this chapter is transmitted to the black female child, usually from the mother. By the time she is five years old, why, what a beginning. End of chapter one. Gang, I'm going to take a quick break.
and I'll be back.